Hey guys, and welcome to another review video. I know there's been a lot of those going on lately on this channel, but this one's going to be on the Iceco VL45 Pro S compressor type refrigerator cooler. So this can be used for 12 volts in your, your vehicle, or you can actually plug this into the wall too. Going to try to keep this real fast paced and informative. So if you're looking at one of these, uh, it should help you out. And while we're in the middle of winter right now, so the need for a cooler is not too imperative. If anything, just one to keep your stuff from freezing. Uh, super excited to be using this during the summertime. Before we open this box up, let's just talk about a few of the benefits you're going to get with having the refrigerator cooler versus the old standard one that's been around forever. You know, 40, 50 bucks at Walmart. Throw some ice in there, good to go. Well, let's see. So you don't have ice in there taking up space. Uh, you're not going to have to deal with draining water out. You're not going to end up with soggy bread or sandwiches. And, uh, well, you don't have to run out to the store and get ice. So that's why you go and spend $700 on one of these on Amazon. And I'll drop a link to it down below. Not for everybody, but if it is for you, then here we go. Now, these straps on here, I really like this. It's got a little, little buckle type on here. Let's see if I can get that undone. There we go. Why do I like these? Because I can reuse them and use them for something else unlike the plastic one up top of here this will just go right in the trash so as you can see the box is a little beat up over on this side and i'm excited to see if this thing has any dents in it recycling is great but reusing is even better if you can find a repurpose for something instead of throwing it in the trash we're showing a gross weight of 61.7 pounds net weight 52 pounds and you can see you want to keep this facing that way because it is a compressor type refrigerator so you can just Slide this right off, and here's going to be our first look. Now this is the smallest of the bunch. This is the, the VL45. They do make a 60, a 75, and a 90. But let me, let me just grab this real quick and feel it. Oh, that's, that's about the weight of a cooler. Bare, barely off, barely heavier at all. But there's your first look at this thing. Now one of the reasons I wanted to go with the Pro is because, let's see how this opens up. Um, oh, so you, you push in on that. And then it pops right open. But you can grab the other side, same deal, and open it that way. Or if you want to take the whole lid off, just like that. So that's, that's one of the big benefits you get over the standard VL45, which I think is like uh, 560 bucks. Here's a look at the bottom of the lid. Got a little chart right here showing you what temperature is for certain foods. And then here's some specs if you want to be able to pause that and take a look at the specs and the wiring diagram. Made in China. Now this lid is universal. And then throw it on either which way. Uh, got this magnet because I was just checking. Looks like stainless steel hardware all around on here. And when this is open, let's check the... See, that feels nice and rigid. I mean, yeah, if you hit that, it's probably going to break off. More than likely. But the action on that is very nice. And taking a look inside, you can see it comes with a basket. A box that probably has the power cords and such. Some desiccant bags, keep the moisture down. And this one actually does have a, a water drain on the bottom. Let's see, what is that, twist off or pull out? This, oh, no, it just pops out, it's got a little O-ring. Okay, so you do have a water drain. And now, you see how this bottom has a, it's not caulked, I was reading the reviews and everybody said, yeah, if you spill milk in here, something's gonna soak into the insulation. So that's gonna be the, the first step I'm gonna do is, Go ahead and take some clear silicone and just run a nice tight bead around that after cleaning it off first. Uh, looks like this is the temperature sensor right here. But otherwise, you don't have any obstructions. We have, well, got the bump out for the compressor and cooling unit. But, uh, you know, let's, let's take a look on the outside now. This is a look at the control. So you got your DC in, the AC in, and then this is... USB, so if you have it plugged in, you want to charge phones off it and such. Real nice, tight control panel on there. And as far as the, the boxing goes, uh, I don't see any damage at all. So that they did a, a nice, nice job securing that. These handles, uh, they don't spring down on their own, but they, they stay down like they're not flopping around in the wind or anything. And when they're up, they feel very good quality. I mean, I don't like that it's plastic. Uh, these are aluminum. Looks like stainless steel pins on it though, so we'll see if those hold up or not. Over on the opposite end, you have another DC port, which is nice uh, that way uh, when you're wiring this up. And I wanted to flip it upside down and take a look, but you don't want to do that with, again, with the compressor, because otherwise 
uh, you risk damaging it if you go plug it in too soon. But there's the water drain, and the bottom of it seems nice construction. Nice uh, feet. No, no rubber feet or anything on it, but good construction on the bottom. You might have noticed these two stickers on the side. It contains fluorinated greenhouse gases, or a cyclopentane refrigerant, which happens to be a highly flammable refrigerant that has uh, odors of, like, petrol, apparently. So hopefully this thing never leaks, right? Let's see if that... Just comes right off without leaving any residue. Not quite. Kind of just wants to break apart. So maybe have to get the old hair dryer out. And if you pull it off at a 90 degree angle, it seems to leave much less sticky residue on there. But maybe they just never wanted you to take it off. Of course, you can use the old sticker trick where you. Take this and just dab it. How about this one? Slow and steady, that one came off basically clean. And then inside the box, we've got our instruction manual, some power cables, and a spare handle and some spare uh, corner brackets, and then a little, uh, some screws. You also get a spare uh, drain plug in there. So here's a glance at the power cord. I'll get a measurement on how long that is shortly, and then standard 120 volt. With this plugged into 120 volts, we can fire it up. You hold the power button for about two, three seconds. You'll see it turns on, and let's listen. I heard the fan start going and the compressor turn on simultaneously. Now this battery monitor, if you leave this on the, the low setting down here, it will actually drain the battery, if you have it hooked to 12 volts that is, and we're plugged in the shore power so that don't matter, but it will run it down to 9.6 volts before it actually uh, protects the battery and shuts this off. If you leave it on high, so, uh, so to cycle through, you can't just press it, you gotta hold this looks like, hold it again, and so if you leave it on high, it will run until the battery goes down to 11.1 .1 and then cut back in at 12.4. If you want to pause that and take a look at those numbers. And this draws 47 watts of power, by the way. So I'll do more on that later. Uh, now, our cooling temperature, if we want to check that, we press this once. And it shows we're at 25 degrees Fahrenheit. There's uh, some plastic on this too. Maybe I'll take that off. That'll help you guys see it. Oh, that looks clean. Look at that. Uh, so if you want to switch over to Celsius, what you do is press the power button once and then hold these two right here. And now we're at 14 degrees Celsius. So you're going to hold this button and this button to switch back. Press once, hold those, and we're at 57. I'm thoroughly impressed with how quiet this is. I mean, listen. Like that, I don't know how well that comes across in, in the video, but let's open it up. Oh, look, we got a nice little LED light inside too. So you can leave this basket in or take it out. That's up to you. Let's feel, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, so ice cold already right here and here. And wow, this side's cold too. So I guess, oh yeah, super cold over here. Actually, up, up here's the coldest. So I guess this has... The evaporator uh, running around the whole thing. Uh, we'll, we'll check back to that in a little bit. Instead of leaving this on the 25, I'm going to bump it up to like 34 because that's about what you would keep a refrigerator at. And we'll see how long it takes to get. And then I just took this thermometer out of my freezer upstairs. So we'll drop that in and see how that compares. Wow, and only 10 minutes later, we're already down to 39 degrees. Of course, we did start at 57. So if you're running this in the dead heat of the summer, it's not going to be as efficient more than likely. We're down in the basement right now. But uh, I did fail to mention you have Eco and Max mode. I'm running these first few tests on Eco, but if you wanted to get it colder faster, you would go to your max, and then you don't hear a change right away, but then you hear the fan speed, and maybe even the compressor just kind of kick up a little bit more. And I did plug a kilowatt meter in line. You can see on max, we're pulling 57 watts. Let's see if we go back to Eco. And that immediately drops down. We're at uh, 37, 38 in that range now. A little while longer, we're down to 34 degrees, and I can hear that the compressor has shut off altogether. Let's see what the interior temperature is on here. And we are showing uh, around 30. Of course, this could or could not be accurate, so I kind of just threw that in there. But well, let's leave it on eco and set this all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit and see how low it will go. An hour later, just came down to check on it. We're down to that zero degrees on the eco mode. No need to switch it to max to get down there. The compressor's off right now. And you can see even with that off, we're still pulling 2.8 watts. Let's see what temperature we're indicating in here. 
And wow, look at that, it's just below zero. So whew, it's chilly in here, works very well. What I'm gonna do now is set it up to 34 degrees and we'll leave it for 24 hours. Here we are 12 hours later and we're at 0 0.09 kilowatt hours. So we're gonna call that 0.18 for a 24 hour period. We're still showing the temperature at 34 degrees. Let's check with this infrared thermometer since I don't know if that one's accurate. I'll put this right on the temp sensor. Look at that, 35.5. So, and go over here, we got 31. This is actually, look, you got some kind of, or uh, frost building up right there. That's one of the coldest parts in the whole entire refrigerator. And the next test is gonna be powering it with the 12 volts. I did measure the power cable that came with it. It's 10 feet long. It locks in there real nice on this particular jump pack. Just took this off charge. However, this is older and really not uh, in not great condition. Well, it says I did put a new battery in 2020, but it's a jump pack. It's not really designed for this. So I did just check its voltage. It's showing a state of charge 96% and 12.76 volts. And I got nothing for cranking amps or state of health. I'm not sure why. Let's see what happens if I hook it while the power is still on. Uh, well, look at that. It's actually, this is kind of blocking it. So I'm going to put it in the other side. All right, we got 12 volts. Nothing has gone wrong. So I'm going to shut off the 120 volts now. And look at that. It stayed running. Didn't. Didn't cause any issues or disturb it. And I'm gonna drop down the temperature a little bit so the compressor comes on. There it goes. This seems to be running it good, but now our internal battery says recharge, so the voltage has definitely dropped. I'll leave it on 34 degrees, come back in a few hours and see how much it discharges this battery and if it holds the 34. And remember, we're in the basement, so it's only 65 degrees down here right now. It's about 70 upstairs. And so obviously these, these numbers are completely relative to whatever the outside temperature is. It's going to pull a lot more kilowatt hours over a 12 hour period if you have it sitting out in the sun and it's 100 degrees out. Four hours later came to check on it. We're still holding 34 degrees and I can hear the compressors running. Our voltage is 12.08 on this battery. And so this should shut it off. I assume it just powers it down completely when we get down to 11.1. I'm actually going to drop this down to zero just to make the temperature difference much more and, and so it runs longer to speed this test up. Four hours later and it did finally throw an E1 code which is DC voltage below the protection settings and battery protection mode activated. So it's now in safe mode, hopefully not drawing anything. The only way to really know would be putting an ammeter on it though. Um, so it, again, shut off at 11.1 .1 and it should turn back on at 12.4. You see our battery voltage has crept back up to 12.8. I'm going to hook a jump pack up to this now and let's see if the fridge turns back on automatically uh, as if you were able to start your car or something. Now we're we're above the voltage and it has not turned up. Oh, yes, it did. It turned. I hear the compressor going. It still has the E1 code. But let's see what our, our uh, if we clear that out. How do we clear the code? There it is. That code does clear itself back out once the compressor fires up and it has enough voltage. And you see we're at 34 degrees now, but that did clear itself. Here we are over a week later. I'm ready to wrap this video up. I left it plugged in the entire time. The AC power stayed cool, didn't throw any codes, no problems. Of course, like I was saying before, to get an accurate reading of what its kilowatts actually going to be when you use this in warm weather, I'll have to wait till the summertime for that. I did go ahead and run that uh, silicone bead around all the edges. And this is going to be a great unit for trips. I will have to update down in the comments in the future. Uh, for as far as its reliability holds up or how reliable it is. I did fail to mention the these vent fans, you know, these louvers, you have to definitely leave space. You can't jam these something like pillows up against these because it does have to have airflow around this end of it. They wrap around onto the other side too. Oh, and I did try it out on the low level battery monitor and it ran that jump pack down into the low 11s. So if you need this thing to run and you don't care about the battery, definitely keep her down there. If I happen to miss anything in this video or you got any feedback, please feel free to drop a comment down below. But overall, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up so far and we'll find out on future trips and such uh, how it holds up, as I've already said. So, if you're looking for a decent quality multi-voltage refrigerator to keep in your car or truck for trips and such and not deal with ice, well then, look no further than the Iceco VL45S or maybe one of their larger models. I'll try and drop a link down below to their website. And uh, yeah, I thank you for watching. If you did this, watch it this far, I don't think uh, you would have unless you're in the market for a refrigerator like this. So, appreciate you. 
and I hope to see you again in the future. See you guys. And like most of my review videos, I always like to flip through the user manual in the end in case I happen to lose it or you guys need this information. So I'll just go ahead and flip through. If you guys want to pause, that's going to be fine. I'll try not to talk. Get the glare off of there for you. Page number two, right, huh? That's so barbaric, I feel like. <laughs> but I, I tell you, I probably will look back at this one day. I mean, if I can't find the manual online, that is, which is, I guess, pretty, pretty unheard of. But you never know. There I go talking. Can't shut up. That's it. Good stuff.